Hi, this is Peggy, and today I have Kathleen Listen with me, and as you know, she's like my favorite guest ever, and we always have tons of really cool stuff to talk about. Our schedules have been insane this summer, and you released a new book that I desperately wanted to talk to you about, and you've been in Germany, and, 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 so... I don't know. We may end up breaking this up into two videos, knowing Maybe. us. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're going to just start off by talking about lipedema. So, obviously, I read this book. And a lot of things with lymphedema and lipedema, you know, go go with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, even if you don't have lipedema, this is good information. So keep watching this video because you may have somebody that you know that's suffering mm -hmm. from this. Absolutely. Um, that's undiagnosed, you know, with lymphedema, lipidema, all these, there's a lot of misdiagnosis, a mm -hmm. lot of undiagnosis, a lot of body shaming, a lot of, a lot of. <laughs> yeah, all of it. So um, I read this book and then I skimmed through it today. So, you know, I, there's a few things I want to make sure we touch on. Okay. But I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to just let you start talking about whatever you want to start. And then I'll ask you questions and we'll go from there. Super, super. So I'll, there's a battle because I want to talk about lipedema versus lymphedema. But I also figure you probably want to know who I am. Oh, out definitely. There in video land. Um, my name's Kathleen Lesson. I'm a certified lymphedema therapist and a board certified massage therapist. I have a practice in Pacific Beach. Um, it's a neighborhood in San Diego, California. And um, I'm author of the lipedema treatment guide. Um, and as a certified lymphedema therapist, I help people with a diagnosis of lymphedema, which is a side effect of cancer, um, and lipedema, which is an adipose tissue disorder. So this is, Larry, my lymph node, lymphatic system lymphedema is a side effect of cancer. And it's not just a side effect of cancer. Yes, yes. It can be caused, mine was caused by trauma. Injury, yes. Um, it can be caused by something as simple as a bug bite. It can be hereditary. There's yes. different types. So, yes, yes. yes. But it's primarily the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. So Larry the lymph node lets you know that lymphedema is lymphatic. And then this is my cute little, have you ever seen these before? That's fun. I, these are fat cells. It's an adipose cell. Yeah, it's the tiny little fat cells is actually what they look like. So this is a, a lipedema. Lipedema is the fat cells. Um, the lymphatic system is also involved, as is the vascular system. But lipedema is mostly fat cells, and lymphedema is um, the lymphatic system. Now, lymph lymphedema, lymph fluids, and your lymphatic system also carries away excess fat cells and so forth, right? So they kind of all can work together. Am I... Are you, sure, yes. Get it all mixed Just get stuff. it all yep. mixed and up so in there. So it's clear, you know, the, yes. the difference between the words. And then and once then, you get into yeah, the, it's, the it's human messy body, there. there are several different systems in the human body. And unlike how we organize our medicine, so everyone has a little silo... In the interaction of the actual human body, the, all the systems interact. So. They all work together with each other. Yep, so the this lymphatic... Is, this is what, in case you didn't know what that look was, that look was, Peggy, you just said I could talk. Now you're talking <laughs> and you're screwing this up, so be quiet. Nope. So this is nope, Peggy, be quiet. Fine. Nope, <laughs> but so the lymphatic system takes um, all the waste products, all the water, and the larger cells, like the proteins and the fat cells, from um, every single intercellular... Um, part mm -hmm. of our body, so the waste products of every single cell of our body go into our body's lymphatic system, and then it takes it back up, and then it, it um, enters the, the venous system, the vein, and goes into the heart right here. Um, and then the lymphatics, the lymph nodes, layer of the lymph node here is a filter. So he's a filter, he has the immune system in here, so he has white blood cells in here. So he wants to just monitor everything that's coming, make mm -hmm. sure there's no outside bacteria. So that's where you get, um, like she was saying, a cut or a scrape or anything because the immune system is impaired with lymphedema because Larry the lymph node isn't working so well. In cancer, he's someone tore him out. Um, and then in other types of um, lymphatic impairment, once you be, yeah. start having the swelling um, and if lymph nodes are injured, then you have to worry about 
um, the immune system not working as well. That's yeah. why if you have lymphedema, you probably know that a, a mere common cold can cause you weeks of, of terrible things. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you ha I have to be very, you know, for me, I'm very, very conscious of my immune system. I'm very conscious of my health. I'm very conscious of all that because mm -hmm. a scratch can put you in the hospital if it's not taken care of properly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, you don't want to get a cellulitis infection and, you know, all no. these, you know, complications because, mm -hmm. you know, so, but that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> Well, well, we'll loop back to it because you can have lipedema and lymphedema at the same time, um, especially if you have a little bit of a more advanced case of lipedema. Uh -huh. So that's, um, but the difference between the two diseases, what both diseases have in common is your family physician might not know what they are. <laughs> so you might just get shuttled from doctor to doctor. And um, so having the information finding out where the competent information on the internet is and where the books are that you can educate yourself right. will give you the power that you need to have an intelligent conversation with your doctor and keep on asking for a specialist till you get to the lymphedema clinic. Right, and it's very common for a doctor to say something like, well, you just need to lose weight. You're overweight, you're obese, you're... Um, that's just a common thing that a doctor likes to throw out there. But if you're living with either one of these, <laughs> It's not just that simple, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just, oh, you know, I eat too much or it's, this is an actual condition that causes, you know, so um, I like in your book, um, you know, right from the get go, you're like, I don't say overweight, I don't say obese, I don't, you know, if you're referring to a term, you will, will say according to, you know, obese according to blah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. but, um, but you know, every body is different. Every body is shaped different. Everybody has different health things they deal with. And, and no, you know, we are in no way ever shaming anybody's body for mm -hmm. whatever shape and size it is. But also know that there is help out there. And so don't let people just body shame you. Go find help and find. So, mm -hmm. now, yeah. what, one thing that I loved about your book is, like, throughout, like, you would tell this, and then you would go into a story, like, meet so-and-so, mm -hmm. and what is, what does lipedema look like, in, because, you know, I know I have lymphedema, I have lower extremi extremity lymphedema, and I have lymphedema on my left leg, and it's moved to my abdomen as well, mm -hmm. so my left leg and my abdomen... Um, but my lymphedema, you know, I have issues that other people don't have and other people have issues that I don't have mm -hmm. because everybody's body is different. And so not everybody has all the same symptoms, not everything that helps one person helps another person. You know, it's, it's, it's very personalized, mm -hmm. which is a lot of times why it's misdiagnosed as well. Mm -hmm. But this book is awesome because you get to see several different people's story, mm -hmm. what they do, what it looks like for them. Now, lipedema is associated with a lot more pain than lymphedema. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that I wanted to make sure we talked about. Yes. Yep. So um, that, and I cover all of this um, in my book, and there's a lot of uh, research studies. So all the research is here. Um, this book is really good um, for a client's perspective. So if I had a client that had a lipedema diagnosis, I would give this to the client and they would be able to work through this. Um, if you're looking for a uh, conversation with a physician or a healthcare practitioner that doesn't know what lipedema is, the ERA's uh, Dion book, uh, Lipedema, the Disease They Call Fat, this is also on um, Amazon and probably wherever books are sold online because it's, it's a little over a year old. So this is out from the Lipedema Project. Um, this is their book written by physicians, um, edited by physicians, full color pictures. This is kind of the quick read that if you go to a doctor and you say lipedema and then he says lymphedema and then you say lipedema and then he says lymphedema and then you like have to write it out on a piece of paper so he does so you know your doctor thinks you know what you're talking about this is the resource that you need to go to the doctor and this is a resource that i wrote that um you'll take at home you'll um enjoy yourself find some value and hopefully since lipedema is um we think that they'll eventually prove that it's genetic um, and it's estrogen dominant that perhaps other women in your family will also have this and they can value, um, find value for if you need, leave notes in the margins or if you write um, on the places where you're writing. Yeah. So yeah. 
lipedema has a distinct look. Yes. So I know I know you were getting there. I wasn't done talking. I okay. will talk. Okay. So I'm too excited. Yeah, I know. So lipedema has a distinct look, um, and I know this isn't going to do justice on the tiny computer screen. So you can go to the Lipedema Foundation, which is lipedema.org, and you can see the pictures. So you cannot diagnose lipedema just from a picture. You're going to have to actually go to a physician because there's other symptoms. It's not just what you look like, but these are common body shapes. Um, for lipedema. So lipedema is um, it's bilateral, symmetrical, so it'll be um, the deposition of fat, like you'll just have extra fat from like below the belly button to the ankle. Um, that's where the person will gain fat. Um, it's estrogen dominant, so it will usually start in puberty or um, childbirth and Sometimes we've seen subsequent childbirth, so like the second mm -hmm. child, the third child, and then it will might just get worse. And then menopause, so it's whenever the hormones start going. And I, I like to use the word people and use the word estrogen dominant because there are men who have low levels of testosterone and then they'll have a higher estrogen. So they'll get things like gynecomastia where they'll mm -hmm. start developing breasts. And then that's where we get the, there's very few male cases, but there are male cases. So I like to use the word people and then use the hormone right. estrogen. Lipedema is primarily a, a fem, f most women are the ones that ha suffer the from this. The vast majority. But there are some men. And there are some men. Now, yeah. lymphedema, it's not gender specific. No, it's not. Um, we see more women with lymphedema mainly because of breast cancer surgery. So upper extremity, you'll see a lot of women with lymphedema in their arms because they've had lymph nodes removed. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, um, lymphedema is not, um, is not gender specific or gender, nope. um, you know, favorable yeah. to either. But yeah. lipedema is, is the majority uh, of, of women. P yeah, people who have a high estrogen. So yeah. it would be it would be if you have a higher estrogen, there you go. And then that opens its own can of worms in medicine and how we treat women versus how we treat men, which is a little bit, I think, or perhaps maybe a little more than a little bit, why this disease was first noted in 1940s um, in the Mayo Clinic by Allen and Hines, and it's still vastly underdiagnosed, and your average physician wouldn't really know what it is um, here in America. It's more diagnosed, interestingly, in Europe um, and in uh, specifically like Germany, the Netherlands, uh -huh. England. They'll have people who are educated in lipedema. Uh -huh. um, they actually have uh, the, they have a CEU class in England where the doctors can go and take the CEU class and learn how to diagnose lipedema. Unfortunately, in America, our, our doctors are not educated on these kind of diseases. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the lymphatic system, and you if you watch my videos, you know I say this all the time because it needs to change mm -hmm. and people need to speak up. And, you know, and so I, I say it all the time. In medical school, a doctor will learn about the lymphatic system for roughly uh, less than one hour the entire time they're at medical school. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the largest part of your immune system, so it's really sad. Yeah. It's sad, but so the it's, yeah. we're so trying to change it. So, and the power in our medical system is um, your average doctor doesn't need to know about lipedema in order, and then we can still all get um, everyone diagnosed because your average doctor doesn't know enough about a lot of things, right. so he sends you to, a, to specialist. a specialist. If you have a heart attack, like you're not going to your doctor, right. you're going to a cardiologist. So if you are going um, to look for a diagnosis of lipedema, I want you to go to a vascular surgeon. So this is the Color, Atmos, and Synopsis of Vascular Disease. It's by um, Stephen, Stephen Dean is the first author. It's a McGraw-Hill education publication, and it has um, several chapters on um, lipedema. So it's, and look at how lucky I am. I just pulled up <laughs> you to just it. Pulled yep, all those the number 70, up. yeah, in part eight, page 321, like here's the information. Several um, chapters are on lipedema and the different types of lipedema. So if you can get a doctor that will send you to a specialist and then you talk to the vascular disease specialist and make sure before you go to that appointment, that that person knows what lipedema is, and you can just call and talk mm -hmm. to the nurse, hey, do they diagnose lipedema at the clinic? 
So I think that's the fast way. Absolutely. Now, I was undiagnosed for eight years, and then once I was diagnosed, my primary doctor didn't know anything. Mm-hmm. And I, br- I would look things up, I would, you know, t- and I would bring things into my doctor, and I would say, listen, we need to, you know, look into this. Mm-hmm. And my, I had a doctor that was really good about, you mm-hmm. know, reading along with me and, you know, kind of playing the game with me and kind yeah. of learning as we go. Yeah. Um, and, and it had sent me, you know, to do some different things and so forth. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid. Remember, your doctor is there to um, collaborate with you. I mean, mm-hmm. I know I used to think that a doctor was a know-all, and if a doctor said to do something, you did it, and that's just not true. It's your body. You know your body. Your do- doctor's there to help, mm-hmm. um, but there's no reason you can't go to your doctor and say, okay, this is the symptoms that I'm having, and you might not have heard of this yet, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you know, you don't have to go in a downgrading way, but yeah. you don't hesitate to, to tell your doctor. Yeah. Talk to your doctor. Make your doctor listen to you. Yep. And if you're going in um, for the primary physician or for any physician to try to get a diagnosis, it's good to to warn them beforehand. And this might be a conversation that you would have with the booking office so you get more than one unit of time. Because if the doctor expects to like come in and solve your problem in 15, 15 minutes, minutes and you, you know, are like jumping on them in the middle of their book day, like that's right. not going to come over too well. Right. But if you give them, you know, the advance notice, say you're looking um, into lipedema and then make sure that they have the resources that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have to make a diagnosis if they can send you to a specialist that can make mm-hmm. a diagnosis, but they do have to. And this is wonderful. I was at the Fat Disorders Research um, Society conference. I gave a presentation there earlier in the year, and we were at dinner, um, and it was a lovely lady from Boston. Maybe she'll watch it. <laughs> but she was like, I'm looking for my doctor to take care of me throughout my lifespan because I have lipedema and like walk with me and take care of me as I age with lipedema. And I think that is what everyone has a right to. Yeah. They have it like your doctor doesn't have to be a specialist in lipedema. Not everyone can be Dr. Karen Herbst um, in Arizona, but your doctor has to know, want to know enough about this so they can take care of you as you age and mm-hmm. know about if you're getting surgery or if you're deciding not to get surgery. Um, and all the different treatments I talk about in the book and to be able to have, you know, an honest conversation mm-hmm. with your doctor. I think that's that's what we should expect from our doctors, right. whatever disease we condition we have. Um, and it's so obvious, like I have a history of breast cancer. My mother died from breast cancer and I have a doctor, um, Dr. Seidel at Kaiser. And it, like, that's a part of how she treats me. Every time we come in, we talk about, you know, where we are, um, and the risk and when I'm getting a mammogram and I got skin cancer and then we worked on, you know, my mm-hmm. supplements after that. And she said, you know, and I'm aging and I'm, I'm a small white female over 40. So it's like, you need to worry about bone density. So I want it to just be like, mm-hmm. like everything else that you and your doctor talk about to ensure your health. And the other thing you talk about in here is a lot of holistic, um, self-care and holistic things. Um, it, Obviously, if people follow me, you know, if they've just stumbled across this in their first video. Um, But if you follow me, you know that I treat uh, almost 100% holistically. I I try to take care of myself Mm -hmm. that way. I feel like it's better for me not to have the chemicals and and all the other things. Um, And that's what works for me. I don't judge people if you want to go with a doctor. That's You have to know your body and you have to know what makes you feel right about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had some bad experiences and decided, you know what, I don't, not going to do this route. Mm. <laughs> and so that's, that's how I treat myself. Um, and so that's an option out there for you as well. And you have a lot of, lot of really good points in here about self-care. And one of them... Um, that that's tough for me and when I read it I was like you know those things you know but you don't (laughs) practice (laughs) and um, you talked about self-love and you talked about being um, and I hope I don't mess this up I I have it marked in my copy of Mm -hmm. your book that's in my car not in here with me of course but you said be a yes and Mm -hmm. not a no but Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And for some reason, that absolutely resonated with me just um, because I try to keep very positive. I believe that, you know, I believe that we create our own world and that, that, you know, our energy is important. And I believe in meditation. I believe that's helped so much. Mm -hmm. Deep breathing is scientifically proven to help move lymphatic fluids. It's Mm -hmm. not like some, you know... You, what do you call it, like some holistic or some weird new age thing. Yeah. It's scientifically proven. Yeah, the thoracic deep, duct bisects the diaphragm, yeah. so when you move so the deep, diaphragm up and deep down. Breath, because yeah. your lymphatic system doesn't have a pump, you are your lymphatic system's yes. pump. And deep pump. breathing is one of the things that, that, that actually helps. Um, but when I read that, that just really resonated with me. And it's just, you know it's tough to live with pain. It's tough Mm -hmm. to live with, um, something that's, you know, I've had two flare ups this year and it's like, I, you know, you do so good for so long. And then it's like, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. (laughs) you know, and it's like, okay, get up and you dust off and you keep going. But a lot of times, um, I am guilty of instead of taking care of myself and loving myself, I will push myself and push myself, which doesn't do any good for me or my family because then I'm hurting and I snap up the people that love me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's like I'm snappy and cranky because Mm -hmm. I should have been laying in bed and just taking care of myself for a day instead of being snappy for two weeks. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this book you know, I, I had you on when you wrote your first book. Was that your first book? Yes. Okay. Yes. When you wrote your first book about lymphedema, because when I got that, I literally got it at four in the afternoon and I didn't put it down. It was a one. And, and anybody yeah. that knows me knows that I read audible books. So the yeah. fact that I actually read a paper <laughs> book <laughs> and so enjoyed just, it. just my book. Right. All yeah. Audible yes. Plus Audibles and, 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 real books and, like <laughs> and, and this, um, I got a sneak peek of it. I got it on the PDF mm-hmm. and that's hard for me to read on the computer yeah. screen. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but I did, you know, I didn't read this all in one sitting, but I did read some and then one day I got a package in the mail. I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, oh the book. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> and so I, you know, I finished reading it. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's so fun. Um, but who knew that books, I, I know there's a lot of book lovers out there that think mm-hmm. I'm crazy. But who knew a book could make you so excited? But, um, you know, there's so many things that um, people need to take to heart. And so many. And the thing, I'm going to brag about you a little bit. So the thing about Kathleen is not only are you certified and not only do you have, but you actually care. Like that shows in your books. Mm -hmm. That shows, I'm going to (laughs) cry. But, um, and and when you have lymphedema and you're going through trying to, it's hard to find somebody that cares. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had great therapists and I've had horrible therapists. I've had terrible experiences. I've had great experiences. But it's rare that even with a great experience, I think that when I walk out that room, the person ever cares or, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you are like, well, what can I do to help? Like, we can get to the bottom of this. What's causing the flare-up? Are you, you know, you've never treated me professionally Mm -hmm. and you knew I was going through a flare-up a while back and you were messaging me. You're like, how are you doing with that flare-up? Have Mm -hmm. you tried this? And I know that you're walking on this. I'm not your medically, but I'm as a friend. Have you, you know, have you tried this? What do you, are you okay? You know, and you know, it's just, you just reek of caring and your books reek of caring. (laughs) They just reek reek of caring, (laughs) reek. (laughs) In the positive way. I don't know if that if word you don't means like the reek. What you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, radiates of caring. Thank you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so I'll share since we're crying. Uh huh. Since we're crying. Um, and I just, I kind of, it was under. It's kind of like under, and you don't know how much you want to share with people. It was easier with the lymphedema book because I could say. Yeah. Something really obvious that happened, um, everyone who knows me from when I was a child, my mother was first diagnosed with breast cancer, and we already mm-hmm. said it because I have to right. get a mammogram every year. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was nine, and then it came back, um, and then she passed away when I was 20. 
So it's easy for me to share with people why lymphedema. Is. Both my parents mm-hmm. passed away from cancer, and this is though it, there's primary lymphedema and there's uh, lymphedema that happens after a, a trauma, mm-hmm. um, and I'm seeing that more and more. So I think people need to yeah be more open with that. It, it occurs after surgery. It oh. occurs after trauma. It's not only my know, oldest when daughter is an athlete, athlete and yeah. I freak out every time she sprains an ankle or yeah. the trainer wraps yeah. her. I'm like, yeah, I, I went in right. and educated yeah. all of the high school yeah. trainers and then college. I was like, yeah. do I need to come in? She's like, I've got it, mom. I'm like, because yeah. I will. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a little more obvious with my first right. book. Um, but when I had my first client that had lipedema she had um she went to dr amron for the surgery at the liposuction surgery and then she came to vacation down here in san diego and her book her story is in the back of this book so i'm not telling tales out of school on her and she's fine with me sharing it um but that just it piqued my interest i already did um lymphatic drainage for plastic surgery like liposuction Mm -hmm. so i knew how to help her but as I learned more about lipedema, it's like this kind of orphan, you know, swept under the rug type of disease, like misdiagnosed, undiagnosed. Mm-hmm. And that's something that also happened in my family. Um, my own cancer was misdiagnosed. My father's cancer was misdiagnosed until about 72 hours before he died. And my mother had this undiagnosed connective tissue disorder that never had a diagnosis. She had painful lipomas and they never figured out what it was. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people who are watching this know what she had. And I think you're right too. I think that's exactly what she had. Um, So when I learned more about lipedema, when I learned that here's this condition that women have that's massively underdiagnosed um, and doctors, you know, they, they don't want to hear about it or they don't have enough time. Um, it just struck a chord in me because that's happened so much in my family and that I can be a person who can put together a resource and give these people who have lipedema um, all the studies that I found, links to the studies all in one place, um, professional advice, um, soup to nuts, like what can you do for exercise? What can you do mm. for, you know, reducing stress? What can you do to reduce inflammation and pain? And I wanted to put it all together and I wanted to, to give it out to the, my patients and mm-hmm. give it out to the world. Um, and so I'm just really proud that I was able to use um, all the education that I was able to get to help people because my mother was never helped. So I'm, if I can reach out my hand and I can give this resource to you and you and your family can be helped, that's, that's very good. Yeah. I mean, and, and seriously, I, I just, you know, every time I, I see a post or, you know, I see you anywhere, I'm just like, I, I smile, you know, yeah. even if it's, you know, um, you know, just, you know, you, maybe you like one of my posts. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. that connection. And I just... Um, you know, it's, it's so exciting. So when you, when you suffer from a condition that, um, affects not just your health, but your, your body image, um, you know, with lymphedema, you have a, a large limb, whatever limb that may affect with Mm -hmm. lipedema, it's pretty much your waist down, even Mm -hmm. though it's even, it's still, you know, you get the comments, you get the hollers, you get all these things. And, you know, we live in a society that, that, you know, body shaming is such a big deal, whether it's because you're too thin or you're too big or you're too, it's just, we live in a body shaming society. And it's, you know, you have, you know, a tiny, cute physique and you're, you're happy and cute. And, you know, when I first saw you, you know, just because of all the years of, you know, stuff, you know, initially you think, oh, but the second that I met you, you know, completely comfortable with you because you don't care about what my body looks like. You care about how can I make you feel better? How can I make your life easier? How can I help you get you the tools to take care of yourself so that you can live the best possible life and deal with this condition the best way and, and live, you know, the fullest of your full life? Mm-hmm. And, and 
you know, I say that sincerely, and I recommend I recommend both books. Whether you have lymphedema um, or lipedema, both books really have a lot of great. Um, the first book talks a lot about reducing swelling. Mm-hmm. Um, this book reiterates that. It talks just a lot about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got great, you know, some of it was a reminder and some of it was like, oh, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and dry brushing. Ask me if I dry brush. I have a dry brush dry and brush. I still don't dry brush. dry brush. And I read that in this and I was like, Peggy, seriously, you need to... <laughs> Do you want to problem solve I think, on how to add dry I, brushing? <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think that I'm going to, like, make you my, um, my, my, um, be, be responsible for telling you, okay, I dry brush today for, for 20 days. I'll be, okay, I dry brush today and tell it to have it. <laughs> it's terrible. But, um, but seriously, this book is just packed, absolutely packed, and, uh, and I, I, I appreciate everything that you do for our community. And I appreciate that you're part of our community. Yes. And that um, that you have gone to so many links to, you know, to learn. Mm-hmm. I was going to shut off the video, but let's just make it a long video. Sure. Hi. Tell us, tell us what you did this spring. Spring. Was oh, summer. Yes. Summer. Okay. She's, she's going to try to get into the Foldy Clinic, but I feel like... What we should have done at the beginning of the video, I'll do it now. Oh, okay. So if I could have 30 seconds. You've got it all. I won't interrupt. <laughs> okay. So this is um, if this book is good for you. So I want to just talk about lipedema. So lipedema is an adipose tissue disorder. Um, like I said, it's estrogen dominant. So it's predominantly overwhelmingly in women. It can start um, with just putting down fat. Um, but the fat comes kind of below the belly button and then all the way to the ankles. So this will be, um, it's overwhelmingly in females. So it'll be just, um, you might have be a large or an extra large in pants and then a medium in the top. It kind of almost looks like the top half of your body doesn't really belong to the bottom half. So that's in some people, not necessarily in all. Um, and then the fat can go down um, just a lot in the thighs and not so much in the calves, um, and they call that jod furs. I think it's a, f- it's an article of clothing. Oh, I think okay. like the, yeah, the, the yeah. military people used to wear. Gotcha. Um, or it can go all the way to the ankles, and then there will be like an ankle cough, so like a cankle. But the feet aren't affected um, if you just have lipedema. You can have lipedema and lymphedema, and then you can have a puffy foot as well. But if it's just only limp- lipedema, um, like your feet will look like an average feet. You'll be able to see um, the features of the foot. Um, and then so just the fat will start on the leg itself. Um, and then it's, there's also uh, venous. So our venous system, which is why the vascular surgeon can help uh, because the veins are involved. So there will be a lot of torturous um, varicose veins um, and then a lot easy bruising. So it'll look like you know, you bump into the table and there's a gigantic bruise, bruise because the veins are weakened as well as the lymphatic system is weakened. So when our lymphatic system starts to get weakened, I'm pointing to layered lymph node, um, when the lymphatic system starts really getting involved too, um, there'll be the some extra swelling and then that's when manual lymphatic drainage can come in as a possible treatment. Um, and another treatment is uh, wearing the compression garments. So they can just help um, to streamline uh, the body so it's easier to walk. It's not so you look better in clothes. It's so it's easier for you um, to complete your activities of daily living and be mobile and be, you know, do everything that you have to do. Does the, I, I, my 30 seconds are up. No, yeah, um, I got it all <laughs> Does the compression garment help with the pain? So it may, some people can say it, it, helps, it helps with the pain, if, some of the pain. if this, the pain is due to the swelling mm-hmm. and the compression garment can reduce the swelling, uh-huh. the compression garment will help. This will be different from a compression garment that you would get if you have lymphedema. It's a different kind of compression, a different grade of compression, it's right? This, it's the same garment, so it'll uh-huh. still come from Juzo, but they'll do in Jopes or wherever mm-hmm. you're getting your uh, garment, but they'll make different... Um, that, like there's a slip fast, there's a different measurements uh-huh. in the abdomen 
just because of the body looking different in the lipedema than the lymphedema. And so it's worth it if you're in compression garments to have who's ever giving the garment and doing the measurement call their area rep and be like, um, you know, this person has lipedema. What, maybe you have to ask Germany, but what are some of the arrangements we can make to make it more comfortable for a person with lipedema? And that goes for lymphedema as well. Compression, uh, I, I always say, unless you just have something really simple, get a, a custom garment. It's mm-hmm. so much more comfortable. I've been wearing com- custom garments for, what, 11 years, and yeah. it's night and day. And it's not a perfect thing. It's still uncomfortable. It's still a garment, but yes. the amount of comfort you know now one thing i know that you talked about this in one of the yes. other videos yeah talk about our yeah. beanie baby okay so then this is the the other thing is um they're not really sure why that one of the theories is that it's the dead um fat cells it has to, something to do with the fibrosis but when you feel the tissue it will feel like a beanie baby the little bumpy so you there'll can be kind of little the little balls there'll be yeah there'll be little balls um and you can get lipedema in the arm sometime but it, Oh, really? Oh, so you, yeah, you, can you can get it. In, it yeah. Does get it in and I was able well. to, some, there's very friendly people at the FDRS conference. And they're like, feel, yeah. feel my, 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 how can you feel that? And then that's when they'll really wow. go crazy. Is uh-huh. They'll go to their doctor and, and they'll be, be like, like, okay. Have you ever felt anything like this? Yeah. And then there's something wrong with the adipose tissue. Right. Like not that I want to be thin. You have to just remove it all. But if it's actually damaged, liposuction can help. And then like the liposuction is the surgical um, intervention. So that, and it has to be done by a doctor that knows how to do liposuction for uh-huh. lipedema. You can't just Not go just a plastic on the surgeon. corner. You're, yeah, the, which it to, needs to be a specialist. To the people who do liposuction And I have a couple time. people to recommend if you want recommendations. Yeah. You can, you can. DM me. I have some expensive oh. people to recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I only I only send people to the best. So um, it's Dr. Amron is the person I would I, I was gonna say yeah. I, I only Amaron. know the person you introduced me to. That's yeah. why I said yeah. that. <laughs> um so but there are doctors all around and then like Dr. Stutz is in Germany. There's doctors all around the world that will do this, but it just the basic that they have to know about lipedema and they have to know that the liposuction is different because if you see online you can find a picture where they show the lipedema fat under the skin and Uh then a regular layer of fat under the skin and it's two different animals that's crazy yeah yeah i wanted to make sure so um i know you're just watching this but actually we recorded this at the end and i interrupted her a lot so now i'm going to put the beginning of the video Uh in and then when we get to the end of the video, she's going to tell you what she's going to tell me right now. And that is about your trip to Germany. Okay. So That was a little matrix. Yeah, right? it was. We get... <laughs> so here we are now. Okay. <laughs> so I had um, the great honor of being able to go to the advanced and review class um, for lymphedema at the Foldy Clinic in Hintersart in Germany. Which is awesome. So the, Yeah, and the Foldy Clinic, to put it in perspective, um, so we have the gold standard for treatment of care of lymphedema is um, complex decongestive therapy. Um, and CDT was invented at the Foldy Clinic. It was like they decided the aspects of CDT, and it was Dr. Foldy at the Foldy mm-hmm. Clinic. So I got to, you can fangirl out of me, you're allowed to touch me. I know, me. I know. I saw, I'm going to get Dr. her autograph. Dr. Foley was there. <laughs> she gave us a lecture. Like, Dr. Tobias Birch was there. He gave us, like, a two, three-hour lecture on lipedema. So I got I got to, to learn a lot about lipedema. I put some of the things that Dr. Birch said, Dr. Foldy said, um, that I learned while yeah. I was at the clinic. And I learned um, a lot of techniques from, and you'd have to actually physically know right. me to get these, but... The amount of information I got on how to treat fibrosis with lymphedema, like later stage lymphedema, where they have the fibrosis and, and the tissue is right. really hard and indurated. It's amazing. I've never seen it in America, but because they can do deeper work and it's a living clinic at the Foldy Clinic, yeah, they're able to be wow. just amazing. And if you want to really... I don't know if you'll get this or not. I don't know if you've had like a chip pack or anything. Did you ever have like a night garment that had... Um, 
I have foam. In I it. have foam. Yeah. What I do because I have fibrotic tissue around my yeah. ankle. Yeah. So what I used to do when I would wrap um, my multi-layer com um, compression bandage at night. Yeah. Um, I would put my cotton on and then I would put a roll of foam around the fibrotic part and then I would you know wrap the mm -hmm. the layers of foam and then the layers of 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 the the low stretch but now um jizo sent me this little um it's it's like a little l or j shape it's like mm -hmm. a little j shape and it's got um foam in it yeah and so it just sits right there on your ankle all cute around your ankle bone yeah and so that's what i'll put on it but yeah. uh, but i don't have any i've never used anything that was like a hard foam or anything on. well this is so it's kind of like peaks and uh -huh. valleys uh-huh so um a therapist called Bernd Schneider invented this a few years back. So it was that it's, it started off as just um, when you cut pieces of uh -huh, foam, you had right. extras, like little right. dibbles ends. So he wanted to help fibrosis. So he put them in between, um, you know, like layers of fabric. Uh -huh. And then if you ply them yeah. and then you put the bandaging over them, when you yeah. take them off, it, it it starts reducing the fibrosis. Yeah, I know that I. Did. I met Bert Schneider. He <laughs> came in. It was Monday at the Foldy Clinic, and we were doing some. We were like practicing our MLD. This is not actually not how MLD is. That's just how I use that's air how, MLD. That's how M -M that's a, it's actually like this. Six. I know five seven times one one second each. But who walks in? Bert Schneider walks in. He's like, and Gunter Kloss is just like, oh, look, it's a Bert Schneider. And I was like, like Schneider, Bert Schneider, like the man who like reduced fibrosis of like about a bazillion people. with Right. Like, because so, this yeah. is what I was told. I mean, this was many years ago. They're like, well, you can never reduce fibrosis. Yeah. That you, that ankle is never, this is the yeah. best that ankle's ever going to be. Yeah. Well, I of course took it as a challenge. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> that's just me. Yeah. But, um, and I have reduced it a lot with just using the regular phone, but mm -hmm. now we'll talk when, when we turn off the camera, we'll talk. Yeah. So. I met Bernd Schneider. I have a picture of me. If you go on my Instagram, it's me and Gunter Close and Bernd Schneider. He did, still doesn't really know who I am because I was just one of the students, but. You were totally fan That was major. On. That was the top lymphedema fangirl. Like, I'm in the clinic with Bert Schneider and Atel Cafoldi and Gunther Klaus, and here it is. So, yay! Yes, yay! yay. So, That's so cool. Yeah. But but this goes back to what I told you. Like, she cares about us so much. She yeah. went to Germany. I yeah. mean, geez, yeah. what a what a and then drag, I came, right? And I came back from fun. Germany. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, and then where did back. we go? And then we went to the lymphedema walk that Lauren puts on up in Santa and Monica. And who did we meet? Well, you know, Kathy Bates. We met Kathy Bates. <laughs> Fan She was there, and she was just, she yeah, came. Yeah, we interviewed her. Most... You ran the camera for yeah. me. I was, you were like, Peggy, you've got to interview her. And I was like, but I didn't. And you're like, I can, I can hold the camera. Yeah. I was like, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was wonderful. She gave the most beautiful, moving speech. She's yeah. done a lot. She's um, done a lot awareness. for a lymphedema awareness, you know. Um, I love Kathy Bates before she had lymphedema. Like, who doesn't love Kathy yes. Bates? Yeah. Um, and I remember when I read, uh, I, because I was a member of LEARN already, and, you know, all of a sudden all this stuff is popping out about Kathy Bates. And I remember sitting there and crying because I, yeah. you, this isn't something you wish on your worst yeah. enemy. And you know what it is. Especially yeah. somebody that you you know, you're like such a yeah. fan of their work and, you know, their life and yeah. somebody that you grew up with, yeah. you know, you're like, yeah, and I remember sitting there crying thinking, and then I remember thinking, well, lymph you know, because she stood up. Now, there's a lot of people in Hollywood that have lymphedema that are wusses and don't stand up because they're afraid that if Hollywood knows that they may swell, that they won't get hired. But Kathy Bates stood up and said, oh, no, this isn't okay. This isn't okay. People need to know about this. And she stood up, and that took a lot. That It took a lot. The, the whole reason that I do these vlogs, I mean, I did a couple of videos, but really this started because Kathy Bates did this big movement, mm. and she was like, tell your story. That's right. That's right. And I was watching stories, like, and bawling, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay. I'll tell my story. I had never told my story. 
I had never shown my leg. I had never worn shorts. Mm -hmm. I had never, this was something that I had and Peggy always wears shoes. We don't know why she never wears dresses and heels. She wears pants and shoes always. Um, And because of Kathy Bates, um, this movement, like, you know, and realizing that how can I sit here and say, it's a shame the doctors don't know about lymphedema when nobody at the grocery store knows I have lymphedema, you know? So I had to, you know, I had to step up. And that's, you know, when, you know, a lot of these videos evolve from that first video that I made that was like, okay, here's my story. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, lymphedema, lipedema, it's a journey. You have good days, you have bad days. You have good years, you have bad years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. It's it's you. It's your life. Um, but when you find people that care and that will help you, like Kathleen, listen, oh, thank you. Um, you know, it makes the journey easier mm-hmm. and it makes it more fun. Now, I've had lymphedema for 20 years, and I think maybe I'd met one or two people in real life with lymphedema mm-hmm. until that until that day and that hadn't really dawned on me because um what had happened is Vern had messaged me on Facebook are you going to the walk Mm -hmm. and I'm like are you going to the walk in Santa Monica and I live 20 minutes from Santa Monica (laughs) so I'm like googling it because somehow I missed it and I'm like yes I am (laughs) she's like oh yay I'm gonna be there and I was like oh (laughs) duh (laughs) so I was glad that you know, it worked out because yeah. I, and it hadn't occurred to me until I was there that like, I'm looking around and I'm like, oh my God, everybody here knows how I feel. Everybody mm-hmm. here has their own story, but bottom line, they know what chronic fatigue is. They know what chronic pain is. They know what chronic swelling is. They know what it is to have a kid point at you and laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, they know what it is to have somebody go, <gasps> what'd you do to your leg? Mm, Like, mm -hmm. it's something that's going to go away. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, it was, it was an amazing thing. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. So I want to pick up that point and kind of run with it. So community is really important. Um, we talked about our mutual friend Vern. So she has like a website, a Facebook group. You could probably just start with a Facebook group called Lymphy Strong. Um, she has primary lymphedema, so lymphedema is run in her family for 120 to 130 years. That she knows that, of. That they know of. And But, she, you know, you don't really meet people outside. I think she said, I read recently, like she thought her and her father were the only, the only people ones. who had this condition yeah. until she found the word you know, yeah. primary lymphedema because they didn't even know right. what it was. And then she was able, so now she's put together this wonderful community that you can hook up with if you have lymphedema. The, I share several um, Facebook groups if you have lipedema. Um, and it, if you do hashtag lipedema on Instagram, which is where the kids are, if you're a kid, <laughs> All the cool like kids me, hang out the cool there. kids are on Instagram. And if you do hashtag lipedema, you will find people who have your body. And I think that is so important because it's so isolating. Lymphedema is it's, isolating. It's very isolating. Lipedema is isolating. Um, even though, you know, it could run in your family, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. And like you said, a lot of people are, are, you know, covering it with the pants and socks and shoes and trying so you don't know that it's, it's what's happening to them. And my guess is that you know somebody that has lipedema but you don't know they have lipedema. And they might not know. And they don't know. So if you're watching this and you're like, wow, that kind of looks like Karen or, you know, whoever. Um, You know. she's always getting bruises. And she bruises and she she hurts. She won't get a massage because her legs always hurt. Yeah, and she's always been embarrassed by her weight and she's always been. And she doesn't eat. She's always on a diet. Trying to diet. You know. And the weight will never come off. So, you know, share this. Share this. um, Because, you know, like I said, I was eight years without a diagnosis. And the doctors tried their best to kill me. No, they just tried <laughs> things they didn't know. They didn't know what it was. Yeah. So they tried things that were not good for me. Yeah. Um, that, you know, some of it made it worse. Some of it just didn't work at all. And some of it was just downright annoying and mm-hmm. painful. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, you know, if, if you think that 
you know, you say, hey, I watched these two crazy ladies on this uh, video. <laughs> one crazy lady. And, and one Kathleen. certified <laughs> liturgy with their... <laughs> um, but, um, you know, hey, you know, check this out and see what, you know, see if this, see if this is something that you... And I'm going to have links to all of these and also to your other lymphedema book and yeah. to your Instagram because I know all the cool kids want to follow you. And you do really good on Twitter. Like, I have a Twitter presence, but I mainly just repost your stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. easier. It's like... That I tweeted I like today. Twitter. That's great. Um, That's <laughs> so if you can follow me, you'll see everything yeah. she gets. No, <laughs> but seriously, follow her. Yeah. Um, Facebook. Where's the best way? Um, what's what's your best social media? What's your favorite? What are you on the most? What do you share the most with? Are you pretty good that you? No, I'm not that good. No, I would follow me on Instagram if I was me. Um, there's a lot of peaceful beach shots. I like to be at the ocean. It helps reduce stress. No, this is I something. I practice what I preach. This is something, and I, I've told you, I admitted this to you last time I saw mm -hmm. you. I There has been times where I've just had this hectic day, and I finally get a second to myself. So instead of meditating or deep breathing, I will check my Instagram because. And You're a cool kid. Every time I really need it, there is 30 seconds of waves, and yeah. I'm like, that's right. That's what I need to be doing. And I'm like, I'll just like take a second yeah. and center and, you know, just kind of deep breathe and just realize that my life is really, really good. Yeah. Not as good as you because I live in L.A. and I don't have the beach right next to me anymore like you do. But but you Instagram the beach. So it's still it's still good. But uh, don't you live with a TV star? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Well, then there you go. You live in L.A. with the TV star. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> You'll love that's that you said true. that. I'll be like, why yes? You can follow well, him on Instagram Yes, I too. actually do. Um, yeah, so if you want to have a conversation with your primary care physician or someone who doesn't know about lipedema, this is great. If you get uh, the if you get the referral to the vascular surgeon, or you want a nice heavy medical book that talks about lipedema, um, just it'll look cool on your shelf. And doctor, I mean, let's be honest. And Dr. Stephen Dean, if I could toot my own horn, he got a copy of the lipedema treatment guide. He recommends it to his clients, Yay. and he he mm -hmm. has he treats lipedema at OSU, um, and he gives out like a handout to his clients that have lipedema that uh -huh. explains about it. And then he says, this is one of the resources that, that he recommends. And then if you yourself have lipedema, someone in your family, um, a friend who doesn't want to talk about it yet, but you kind of want to get educated so you can help your friend, um, lipedema treatment guide is available on Amazon or wherever online books are sold. Um, <laughs> We did have a, an issue in Australia. It's like many, but people in Australia know this. Like many other books in Australia, it is literally twice as much as it is in America wow. because you like have to ship it there yeah. and they have taxes, um, but it's available on Amazon Australia. Um, and it's also available worldwide, including America on um, ebook. Kindle oh, okay. paperback. So if you are a Kindle type person, um, and you that's like to great. Read on the yeah. If you like to read on the Kindle, and then there's a lot of links in the back. There's like 20 pages of, re of references. So those are all linked on the Kindle. So you can just click and go directly to the study. Um, and this is an easy read. I don't know if you can see this. And she leaves a lot of places for notes. Now, the thing that you brought up in this book, which I, I, if you do have lipedema. If you're reading it like me, I don't have lipedema, but I still got a lot out of it. Great. If you do have lipedema, read this book with a pen. I read with a highlighter, um, but read this book with a pen and mm. actually take the time I to do this. To and here's why. Because maybe your daughter or yeah. your granddaughter or your niece yep. um, or maybe, maybe in 20 years, mm -hmm. you're already gone somebody is going to pick this up and you could save their life because you're going to put the helpful notes yeah. in there that um, they're going to be like, oh, wow, and this is going to be a treasure. So Yeah. Um, I guess just think about its effect on you if um, you knew when you were 16 when it first started that there yeah. is a disease called lipedema and runs in your family and you are able to open a book and see how your grandmother yeah. did it how your great-grandmother did it and there would just be such a positive way of like 
oh, the women in my family, we all meditate. And, the women and, in my family, we, do this, we all we take do care this, of this, we do that. And we, yeah. So know. it's this great, it's this beautiful yeah. gift that you can give to the women in your family that come after you. Right. If you put down, you know, what has truly touched your heart. And the, you that's to that was one of the things that I thought of because yeah. I I do I always take notes in books just because I don't remember stuff, um, <laughs> so I like to you know highlight things that mm -hmm. I want to go back and and read. Um, the other thing I do is I take pictures. If you see my cell phone, um, I, I'm yeah. a professional photographer and my cell phone is literally notes. I will take pictures <laughs> of pages. Notes. I will take yeah. because I want to go back. I'm like I want to remember. I need to you know do something with mm -hmm. that. So but but but. That's the only, like I said, I am an audible book mm -hmm. reader, but this, um, your stuff are, are pen and highlighter books. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I loved it, and I really uh, appreciate, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I like her a lot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm your number one fan. Yay. Do you want, um, do you want a quick tip? Yes. A quick tip, my quick tip of the week. So there's this a song, have you ever heard it? It's Weightless, it's by a... Uh, group called Marconi Union. Uh -huh. If you can't get, so it's, this is a meditation tip. If like you want to meditate, I feel like in America, which is all I can speak to because we're Americans, like we think we can be going 60 miles an hour and like driving and doing everything. And then all of a sudden, if it's time to meditate, like we should just be able to shut it <laughs> shut all it down off. and have like zero thoughts, which never happens in meditation. That's not the goal. But like we should somehow be able to instantly downregulate. And for a lot of people, that's hard. Right. So if you take, it's like an eight-minute clip. It's been tested to lower your heart rate, which I think is just crazy, but it's true. And so just try the next that's time. That's the you link want, that in the other yes. video that you that yeah, you did. I've got that, but I'll link it again in this video. Yeah. Because I have that link in our other one of our other yeah. videos. So just try and listen to that first to like down regulate your nervous system and then see if sitting in meditation is easier. You know that it might help you. If it doesn't, well, find something that does. There's YouTube out there, folks. You found mm -hmm. me, you can find something. Yeah. Yeah. But Kathleen, thank you. You're welcome. You're awesome. Thank you. All right. That was a great tip of the week. Good. And are you coming on next week for another tip? Yes. Yeah. You'll have to come back to San Diego. I'll have Diego. to come back to San Diego. Every week for your tip of the week. You know, I do come to San Diego every week. <laughs> I shoot here every week, but then I usually work and run. Zoom, right zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah. But, uh, because you go back to L.A.? I do. To your TV star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to my, yeah, to my, my star life that I live yeah. up there. Yeah. Yeah, somebody said that to me. They're like, well, and I was like, that's social media, folks. I clean the toilets just like you do. It it's is. No, you should be on her Instagram. <laughs> Star-studded. Star-studded. Ripped from the TV headlines. Yeah. 